Welcome back to Lead the Standard, everyone. I'm Kelly Taylor, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host, Jackie Stapleton. Jackie, do you want to say a quick hi before we get started? Sure. Hello. <laughs> um, today's episode, we are talking about people. People are at the heart of safety, which is inspired by our recent newsletter article, um, edition number 71, which you can find on LinkedIn. Now, if you tuned in last week, you'll remember that we talked a little bit about Jackie's aha moment when she was reflecting on her hike along the Kokoda track. And that was a powerful reminder of how people, not just process, can drive safety forward. So in this episode, we're going to be exploring how people are the true champions behind OHS. And we're going to cover the key elements of risk identification, assessment, controls and corrective actions all within the ISO 45001 framework. So it's going to be a conversation packed with insights and, as always, practical takeaways. So, Jackie, I'm going to hand straight over to you to share your story. Thank you. Um, I don't know if I should be embarrassed to share this or not, but I'm, it's already out there in um, the newsletter, isn't it? So I might as well talk about it out loud because when... I first sat down a few weeks ago to write the um, Lead the Standard newsletter. I think it was 71 you mentioned, Kelly. Yes. Um, we were still focusing on the OH&S um, theme um, for, for the month and I thought, oh, not another one on OH&S <laughs> because you all know that my first love is quality. And so, you know, Kelly said, You've got you've got to write an article on OHS risk management. I thought, oh, and I was sitting here at my desk, and I normally it just all comes out of my head, but I just sat here typing a bit, changing my mind, typing a bit. I'm sure it was nearly an hour, and I was just staring at my desk, oh, flacking us, oh. complaining about having to write the article. Yes. <laughs> I think I was. I think I was slacking people saying, oh, this is horrible, blah, blah, and I just generally, win yeah, generally whinging and complaining. <laughs> and then I, I was really just making excuses, but because I just couldn't find something that, I don't know, I could feel passionate enough about writing. Otherwise, it's just blah. So... I did, and I think this came to me as I was messaging you probably in particular, Kelly, and Slack. Like, I actually admitted that I simply don't like writing about OH&S. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, well, why? Why don't you like writing about OH&S? And then it hit me, this was my first thought, so don't, persecute me because there's more coming my first thought as to why in my head there seemed to be a lack of people people in it and I've always been driven by that human element that human part of um, management systems but as you hinted at earlier then I this was another one of my distraction techniques I suddenly thought, oh, there must be an easier way to do this without me having to do this work again. And I remembered that I wrote an article, um, oh, was it 2019? I think it was 2017 I did Kokoda. 2019 was the Swiss Alps. So um, I found it anyway um, because when I did the Kokoda track, um, the real one in PNG, and Kelly's also done it, she did it several years before me, I was reading the article and, I was, you know, I saw an amazing photo of all of us at, it's not the finish line, <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> Is it the beginning? Of the, the, the end of the track, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the sign in Kokoda. You've made yeah. it. Yeah. Like, congratulations. Yeah, and, and I guess it depends which way you do the track because you can do it either way. But, you know, I saw this amazing photo with everyone. I had two friends that did it with me and then all the friends that we made over the 
nine, ten days that it took to um, do the track. So I thought, oh, there's people. Like that's, you know, I look, I look back on, on what I wrote. I look back on, you know, the whole track itself. And, but what I was writing in preparation for doing the track as well as afterwards, I think this was the um, old article I was looking at, I realised that, oh, hold on, Jackie, you're, you're crazy, you're an idiot. Like I say 45,001, like while it does focus on processes and you said it like it's risk identification, assessment, control, like it's blah, blah, blah. But it's actually the people within it who make all of the difference. So I hadn't, I had forgotten that connection. And I suppose by my excuses and my moaning and whinging and um, going and, yes, that's right, going and looking at other, other ways of getting out of doing, writing this article, <laughs> I realized that there is actually. A human element and and duh I know some of you listening will be going duh what where have you been Jackie I know I just needed a reminder okay so be nice um and that's why you know that was this big light bulb moment for me and then I could just write write um the newsletter for that week it all it all came to me I just needed that sort of I don't know inspiration yeah, something that meant some, something to me. Like otherwise the newsletter doesn't mean anything and then when we talk about it it's just like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And I know we've had that um, that in particular I'm doing going off track a bit here, Kelly, because I know ages ago I used the AI in, in one of our platforms to write yeah. a newsletter because yeah. I just couldn't, yeah, I couldn't figure out what I was doing. Yeah, it was something you weren't passionate about. Yeah, so I just went, oh, that'll do. And then it was, you know, and I think around our podcast time I said, no, we're not talking about that one because <laughs> I don't like, I didn't like it. It no. was, it didn't come from, yeah, the heart. So, while it did take me an hour to figure this out, um, it helped me to come up with a model um, which is around the people-centred oh and uh, risk management model. So that model, I don't know if you've got it with you, got it with you Kelly. Um, <laughs> there it is. Um, it, so this model emphasises that people are at the core of every safety process, whether it's spotting risks, assessing their impact, implementing controls, or taking corrective actions. It's all about that human, ele well, human element, human involvement, making safety proactive or like you know, collaborative. So, you know, it is about the people and, of course, ultimately effective. So that's how the model was born. Anything to add to that, Kelly? No, I think this is going to be no. a really good conversation. So let's jump into it. Okay. Okay. So as Kelly always wants me to have a short answer, because as you can tell, I can go on a bit. The people-centered OHS risk management model, as I've mentioned, puts people at the core of all OHS processes. It centers on human involvement. So the model highlights how each element, so risk identification, risk assessment, controls, and corrective actions, it actually relies on, I was going to say engagement, but it's active engagement. So that's a big difference, active engagement from employees, man managers, uh, that whole leadership element as well any worker that's involved. So all these workers, people, play a pivotal role in recognising risks, assessing their impact, implementing the preventive measures and addressing the issues post-incident as well. So this approach ensures a proactive, 
collaborative and responsive OHS management system. Ultimately, this is fostering, which is what we're all heading towards, a safer workplace. So the people are the drivers. Um, they're not just the drivers, they're, they're the purpose I, as well. We talked last week about that. making sure Love that, that. OHS it, it allows everybody to go home. Well, well the point of OHS is to ensure that everyone goes home at the end of the day. So yep. it is your, your driver and your purpose all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I like that, the purpose, yeah. Okay, so will we break down the model? Like yeah. That. So <laughs> the first key element that supports the focus on people or workers in OHS is risk identification. So the process, this process in particular, the risk ID, is fundamental to ensuring a safe work environment as it involves actively recognizing potential hazards that, of course, can lead to injury or illness. What makes this particular process truly powerful is the role that people play in it. So, again, the role that people play in it. Employees, like through their day-to-day -day experiences, they're often the first ones to notice unsafe conditions okay, or activities or what other people are, are doing. So we have to encourage this open communication, which all leads to this culture where workers actually feel comfortable sharing these observations so you can get amazing insights that may otherwise be missed if people are not comfortable in sharing this or you know I'll use the word reporting their first-hand experiences knowledge of the work environment because remember they're on the floor they're in the thick of it so they're, they're really important in identifying the risks early on what's going on so then the organization and other people involved can take these proactive steps in mitigating the hazards before something happens as that sort of that proactivity so when employees are engaged in the risk id process it's not like it not only is about safety but i think it's about empowering the people the workers to own that safe workplace, not just for themselves, but for everyone. Absolutely agree. I love that. Engaging and empowering, I think, are two strong words there. And active engagement. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why in the model I've got the people or the workers in the middle. They're, they're the key. What's the word? Um you know, we core, talked about really. pull and, sorry? Push, they're the core. Yeah, and it's the push and pull as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're core. So if if there were arrows in our little model, um, yeah, and for those of you just listening, obviously you can't <laughs> see what on earth I'm talking about, um, <laughs> only if you're watching this. Um, you'll see yeah, that people are just core to that risk ID, which is the first step, all right? So the second, I said step, but the second key element that supports the focus being on people in OHS is around risk assessment. So first one was risk ID, okay, oh, sorry, hazard ID, so that actual identification. The second one is, well, how big is it? Okay, so this step goes beyond identifying the hazards and it actually involves evaluating the likelihood and severity of, of what you've identified. Okay, as I said, how, how big is this? So here again, the people within the business are critical. So workers, the people that are involved in it, are often the best source of any insights and knowledge when it comes to understanding the practical side of that and the impact of any hazards that might be identified. So they know all the little bits and pieces, the details, they'll, they'll have the knowledge because you know they're the ones doing it. They're doing the tasks. So we need their input on this risk assessment. 
and how they might, I suppose, realistically, that's a good word, affect their work environment, so their work environment and their workers. So by involving our workers, employees, whatever that workers might include, the risk assessment discussion, so you could, you know, make it a stand-up or a toolbox talk or a risk risk identification and assessment workshop, something like that, to promote discussions. Businesses can get a much better picture of how likely the hazard is going is, is to occur. And then of course what the consequence or the severity of its of its potential if it if it does happen. So the workers' perspectives, they they ensure that these risk assessments or evaluations are not only well one completed, but they're actually practical. It's not just theory, it's from people that actually know the realities of the workplace. So again, it's that collabor like collaboration. Um, it improves the accuracy, so how spot on you are with the risk assessment. But again, if we're thinking about people and culture, it fosters that, that culture of ownership and responsibility and accountability for safety across all levels of the business. I love that. Um, there's a few things in there that I've got to take away. And look, I'm going to apologise. I've got my pooches going off in the background, which I'm sure you can hear. Um, the At the moment, we are starting to come around to our team's anniversary check-ins. And part of their check-in is that we do a risk assessment and have a bit of a risk identification. And we're a remote workforce. So for me, I can look around my office right now and go, okay, um, there's a possible risk there. Someone's dumped a box in a place that I don't like. Not myself. <laughs> um, but I can do that around here. I know what my workplace is. You can't see it, obviously. Everything got the upper view. But one thing that I noticed as I was reading through those and redoing, we um, we sent get the team to do a um, an online training course, which is um, done by the Queensland um, government's WorkSafe. So it's a, every year an annual reminder and it's updated with all of the things that relate to a work from home environment. Watching that again uh, yesterday, actually, um, mm -hmm. I had that idea of, well, I can see these risks to a point, but I also put my blinkers on at another point as well. So as I'm doing that, having another set of eyes run around the room, which we typically do. We have um, the, the manager come and, and reassess. That's not always possible. So I have my other half walk around and he has he has much more OCD eyes than I do when he picked up a few <laughs> extra things. Um, but again, it was that, okay, there, there's what I've seen, There's then there's what else is actually going on. Um, and those are things that we can change. We all need to be responsible for our own workplaces. As I said, right now, Jackie thinks that my office is a lovely place, but there's a couple of boxes over in the corner there that, that can't be seen. So I'm comfortable enough to own my workspace and share that in my reports. Um, so I think that's really, as I said, really important and be and collaborating with someone, even if you don't have someone there in your physical workplace from work, having someone else to work that walk through that with you yeah. certainly helps improve that risk element. Yeah. That's actually a really good point because we we do sort of get used to our own work environment, don't we? And we may not see things. Um yeah, you know, because it's yeah, it's just there every day. So, you know, getting getting someone else is that whole fresh set of eyes again, isn't it? So, um, yeah, that, they'll see things that we've just <laughs> – it reminds me of having teenagers, that they'll just walk over. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, I'm just going to walk over that one. Yeah. <laughs> so – um, Work out when you're zigzagging around boxes. Yeah, and and well, you get you get used to it because now you've made me think. Ah, oh, what's around me? I'm not quite sure. Um, probably the worst thing I have in my room is a dog and a dog bed under my desk. 
and they're a trip hazard. Um, We've both fallen over our dogs randomly. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I can see when you shuffle there, you've got a rug in your background. I have. Kind of going off topic. That was the thing that my other half picked up. I'm standing on one of those plastic anti, like I've got carpet and one of those plastic. Oh, yeah, rugs. I've got that. Yeah. So for me, I was like, oh, yeah, it's there. I hadn't noticed that this rug has gone from being perfectly under my desk to somewhat shifted and leaning up the wall because I oh. use it every day. He came in and went, ouch, I just kicked my toe on that. I went, oh, just step over it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, little things like that. So, again, yeah. you, you become so used to it. And, and yeah, having more than one set of eyes collaborating together certainly does, as you said, improve the accuracy of that risk assessment. Yeah. And, look, we're just, we're, you know, low risk really. So, you know, there's a lot of workplaces which are much higher risk and it would be embedded in their day-to-day. But I suppose, yeah, I'm just encouraging everyone listening to really have a think about, well, at what level are, are the workers, people involved in each of these steps? Yeah? Yeah. Create oh, thank you, ownership. Kelly. You're welcome. Thank you. So the third key element that supports the focus on people in OH&S are controls. Okay, so we're working our way through risk identification, risk assessment, and now control. So once risks have been identified and assessed, the next crucial step is implementing measures to mitigate or ultimately eliminate these risks. So these can Controls can range from like physical changes in the workplace, updated procedures or safety safety protocols, so using the hierarchy. However, like the success of any control measure hinges on, guess what, the engagement and adherence of the people it is actually put in place to look after, funny enough. So because, because of that, Workers, employees, um, visitors even, contractors, they play a critical role in ensuring that these controls are not only followed but also effective. So, again, in real-world situations. So by actively having them participate in the implementation of these controls, whether it's through feedback, just suggestions for improvement, or, well, if, you, if you're involving them, that's where you're going to get them following, isn't it? Because they've got some skin in the game. They've put, it, they've put the control forward, so they want, to in, what they want to ensure that it has actually worked. So having workers involved in that whole process of controls, it helps to refine and strengthen them and, of course, that compliance as well. So... <laughs> These workers that are like on the ground, their experience really pulls out those practical or things that we might not see. So um, when people, when you've got people engaged, they're invested in those controls and they understand the why and therefore it leads again to a safer and I think a more resilient workplace because they've been involved in that process. They want to make it work. I think that's really important, as you said, like putting things in place to encourage people to think about their own safety, make sure that there are things, controls, funny that word, <laughs> Charles <laughs> in place to, to encourage that from from all of the the team. Um, I do want to talk about this more, but I also think that we jumping onto the next one, they're going to tie together nicely as well. So I'm going to let you jump straight into the fourth and final step. Okay. So the fourth and final key element to support the focus on people in OHS is, of course, corrective actions. So we've identified a hazard, we've assessed it, and we've put controls in place. And at each point, we've involved our people in the process. 
So the corrective action is after an incident or even a near miss, taking corrective action is all about preventing it from happening again in the future um, where it's already happened or even elsewhere as well. Okay, so you have to remember it's not just about fixing what went wrong. So fixing what went wrong is an action. Corrective action is about identifying the root cause and preventing it from happening again. So it's about learning from it and improving the process. So this is where the involvement of people, again, surprisingly, is really, really important. So employees who witnessed or experienced an incident or something occurring, they've got amazing feedback on what actually happened, why it happened, how it can be avoided, you know, in the future. They're, like their first-hand um, ideas, insights, it, it helps and these it helps refine the procedures that they're following because they're involved in it. So it ensures that the corrective actions are not only again practical, but they work. They're effective. So you, by engaging your workers in discussions around what led to the issue, so root cause, remember, is part of corrective action, getting their suggestions for improvement. The business can continually improve and build on their safety measures. So again, I think I feel like I've used this word a lot, <clears throat> collaborative, and it fosters a culture of ongoing improvement. So where safety is not just a set of these static rules or words, and I mentioned that before when Kelly just said the words hazard ID, um, risk assessment controls, corrective action, that's just blah, 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 just things. But it's so, it looks so different when we have our people involved in the process. It, it gives it, what's this called? People are at the heart of safety. I believe so, yes. Oh, my goodness. I've ended that really well. Oh. <laughs> really good at the segues this week. I'm, I'm very proud. Of <laughs> but, yeah, I think, I think the – Emphasis there on continual um, improvement and continual review, and yeah, there's there's lots of words in this this week that I think I feel like they're as you said, people at the heart of safety was really obvious, but I do feel like a lot of these collaborative and empowerment and engagement and continual improvement, like it's it's great to find a root cause, but how do we continue to manage that and improve on that and change all those things you've said there it's evolving I feel like all of this is really obvious stuff but... I was going to say exactly the same thing it was yeah. it's like uh, I feel like everyone should know this or knows this but I had to be reminded of it hmm. it's all it's all it is always there so you know even at the if that at a minimum, if you've listened to this and you've been reminded, <laughs> Kelly's and my work is done. Yeah, well done. Well done, girls. Um, <laughs> but I think I think that's the, the point is that it is really obvious and it is always there, which makes it the problem. It's always there that <laughs> we don't think about it. We don't see it. We should... Which, which could also be a positive. We should be living, breathing, doing all of these things every day. But it wasn't until I said yesterday when I was um, revising our team's um, annual, like their anniversary check-ins, where I said we do do an OHS element as part of that. And I thought, well, I didn't. It's been a year since, well, not quite a year since I've done mine. I'll do mine while I'm here. And there were a lot of little aha moments. And oh yeah, actually, probably less aha and more. Oh, yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> along the way because we do live and breathe it and you f you often forget that you actually really need to be paying attention to this and making it a priority. Yeah. And you know what happens, and this isn't just OH&S either, it's in general, sometimes you think, oh, it's just much easier if I just figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sorry, but, that was that was way too much of a yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but oh, do I really have to ask people? But mm. absolutely, you get while well, it's sort of false economy. Mm. So while you think, oh, it's just much easier and quicker if I just make this change and I figure it out, and I'll just tell them what the change is. Mm. But it's actually, as I said, false economy because you're not getting buy-in. You might not even be understanding the problem properly. Therefore, the corrective action isn't going to prevent it from happening again. And it's actually going to take longer. Mm. So stop your huffing and puffing and get get the people involved because otherwise, as a worker, they feel like they're having something done to them. And this is not a conversation with we've them. had a couple of times in the last few yes. years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, if people in that situation just think, oh, this is just happening to me. Mm. So, and yeah. I think that's really important. But we also need to be, as workers, need to be aware of the opposite of that as well, in that oh, my, we'll use my mat as an example again. Now it's a dog. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I can se- send Jackie a Slack message and say, hey, Jackie, my my mat slips. Can you fix it? Well, no, she can't. She doesn't know what kind of mat. She doesn't know where it is. It, it's as a worker, it's really easy to go management. That's your problem. But if they're not in that workspace, they're not using it every day. They're not understanding how that piece of equipment or that piece of or that particular yeah you know, whatever it is. If management, top management, whoever it is you're reporting that to doesn't understand the issue in its entirety, they can't find that um, the root cause. They can't help you mm-hmm. come up with a solution. So as workers, we need to own our sites, our workplace, and we do need to engage actively, not just when OH&S says, you need to complete this annual test of yeah assessment or whatever it is as workers we are just as responsible for getting home safely at the end of the day possibly even more so than our employers in some in some way or another so everybody needs to be engaged in that process absolutely yeah and that that comes into people feeling comfortable to do it that's that culture like the cultural element Yeah, so it's sort of, you know, as as per that model, it sort of breathes, it's sort of snowballs, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm just going to share it one more time because I, okay. I do, I like the simplicity of this one. Um, it yes. Is, it's just it is. simple and all of the people. And, yeah, it's there. just people, people-centred. people It's just something, you know, as I said, yeah, I I don't know if I want to say I forgot, but I forgot the importance of it. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's probably a good insight. Yeah. It, again, it's I think it's because we live, breathe this every day that we do forget the importance of things. That yeah, what's right in front of you. People say absence makes the heart grow fonder or whatever, but also you get a little bit. You're a little bit comfortable, so <laughs> yeah, you've you've got to yeah. be comfortable in being uncomfortable, but also comfortable in, as you said, that communication. Yeah. So, well, and that's why we called it. People are at the heart of safety, <clears throat> and um, yeah, it's an important message. So we covered um, people at the heart of safety, but we particularly were talking around risk identification. Well, hazard identification, risk assessment, controls and corrective action. So that whole loop of the, you know, oh, whoops, I've identified something that we need to do something about or it could be whoops, something's happened, then assessing it, then putting controls in place and then implementing the corrective action, which is all about preventing it. Now, as I've mentioned a few times, I can just say that like that and it's just like a list of blah, 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 blah. But as soon as you bring the people into it, I actually feel warm and fuzzy just saying it. <laughs> like it, cha- it changes the whole context of it. So that's the, you know, the important takeaway from today at C- like P 
people are at the heart of safety. Is that what we called it? Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really pivotal. So as always, Kelly, before I hand it back to you to finish up, unless you've got something else to, to add, no, I'd like to close with my favourite thing, stay curious and always lead the standard. So by staying curious and leading the standard, you'll continually find new opportunities for growth and excellence in your career. Thank you, Jackie. Um, as Jackie has just said, that's it for today's episode of Lead the Standard. It has been a really meaningful conversation. So people are the core of workplace safety. So thank you for joining us. And we do hope you did find some valuable takeaways or you had some, oh, yeah, moments like we do. Or, yeah, we've just it's a, just reminded you of that, that, that central um, core role that we do play in all of those boring items on the list Jackie's just run off for us. <laughs> um, a quick preview of what's coming up next week. We will be focusing on using ISO 45001 systems approach for preventing musculoskeletal injuries. Um, and I think this one's going to be equal parts interesting and amusing given recent events within the team. Um, either way, I can assure you that um, you will be able to apply some of the principles to common workplace injuries. So be sure to tune in. Um, as always, thank you for listening. And as Jackie said, stay curious and keep leading the standard. Thank you and see you next time. Thank you. Bye.